Now, these are the last days of Pompeii. What, what I would say is the kind of stuff you're seeing with that, that, that uh, sort of eco-fascism in the Atlantic Monthly, that is a ruling class that sees the British Isles are sinking into the North Sea under the weight of uh, you know, trillions and trillions of derivatives, and the U.S. is collapsing at a breathtaking rate. So the Anglo-American ruling class collectively says, we are doomed. If, if they were religious, they would express this with the idea that the end of the world is at hand, because for them, it seems to be. Now, they're, they're obviously neo-pagan, so they express it in this stuff, you know, the polar bears are dying, and the seas are rising, and all the rest of it. But even there, notice, British Petroleum, you're not going to find any more British Petroleum green ads, because they've quit it. That's the news from yesterday. They're not going to be beyond petroleum anymore. They're going to be, we're an oil and gas company, and that's who we are, and we're giving up this whole idiotic garbage of beyond petroleum. So now This is the good news. You're saying you believe they're stalling, and they did announce yesterday we're not going to bring the carbon tax vote up for two months in the Senate, but I think that could be a fast one. But, but, but you're saying from your antennae, your feelers out there, that you're saying you believe this, this was all this over propaganda, this over energetic propaganda everywhere was actually a death rattle, a, 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 a no, fit it, 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 as the new order sits in its, in its crap filled diapers. There is no plan. In other words, they, this is, these are a bunch of pragmatists who, uh, they go from one thing to another. But the, the idea is that if you look at the, uh, the, the situation, I think, in the Congress, it's going to be hard to pass this. If you look at the, the world situation, that's really the news of today, was the last day of the World Economic Summit, the Group of Eight in L'Aquila, presided over by Berlusconi. The, Obama's task, Obama was the chairman of this expanded Group of Eight, where they brought in Brazil, they brought in some other third world countries, developing countries, and they said, okay, now you're going to join in on some kind of a cap-and-trade or carbon emissions limits. We're going to impose our carbon uh, offsets and permits on you. And Lula, of all people, the International Monetary Fund puppet Lula of Brazil, says, no, we're not going to do it. And also India says no, and China says no. So this is a good case where the third but world But they've guys, still got us to rape, and, and we're the, you know... Huh. Yeah, but this is a big defeat. In other words, this was what they wanted to do is to say, how do we strangle the economic development of China and India and Brazil? How do we, because these are the BRIC, right? You put in Russia, that's the BRIC, the BRIC group. How do we strangle them? Well, they said, we'll use, we won't, we won't try to bomb them because we can't. It's too big and, you know, the, the consequences would be disastrous. We won't use Bush's right-wing methods anymore. We'll use Obama's left-wing methods and we'll get them to strangle them with, uh, rather than bomb them, strangle them, using these left-wing uh, demagogic slogans about global warming and the polar bears and all the rest of this stuff. As far as I can see, he has fallen on his face, and this is one of his primordial tasks. The Anglo-American finance oligarchs wanted him yeah. to strangle, above all, China, and he has failed. And well, I want to bring this deal. up to you, uh, and I want you to break down that good news here, Webster, uh, but the issue is... I did watch his press conference uh, with the Russian president, and I don't find the Russian president to be particularly an imposing figure, but Obama was groveling and, and very <laughs> supine almost to him. And then I, same thing with the Saudi king, the bowing, the groveling. When he doesn't have a teleprompter, th is that why he got the power? Because every time I see him with even an oil company exec or a banker, he... Or 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 uh, his chief of staff or Geithner, he literally toadies and bows to everyone. And is this a problem for the elite when people keep seeing Obama uh, groveling uh, to anybody and everybody? He is like Lord uh, Sir Neville Chamberlain, and but Obama is a weakling and appeaser by design, in the sense that only by being an appeaser can he be the kind of warmonger that they need. Remember, with Chamberlain, Chamberlain said, we're not going to get involved. We're just going to build up Hitler and play him against the Soviets and Stalin, and we'll get rid of both of them in the process, and the British Empire can go on for another hundred years. With Obama, it's the same thing. We are too bankrupt. Our military is at the point of collapse, I would think. Uh, we're, we're isolated. We're hated. We can't attack anybody. We've got to play the enemy states one, one against another, and therefore we need a president who is structurally a weakling and an appeaser, but... This hides 
the cunning, right? The whole uh, dissembling, deception, uh, strategic trickery, duping, brainwashing, hypnosis, all the stuff that Obama brings, that's how he, he operates. Now, in terms of Russia, I think he bombed there. The first thing is the New York Times admits Obama's magic got him nowhere. The Russians were not impressed. Hats off to the Russians. Medvedev was looking at him like he was some type of jackass. Well, and Medvedev, Medvedev is, is not the strongest. I mean, Putin is the one who really counts. But in terms of the, of the Russian masses, they couldn't care less about Obama. You didn't have 200,000 Russian lemmings for Obama the way you had 200,000 German lemmings at the Brandenburg Gate last year for Obama. That didn't happen. Now, the, the key one that I watched was the Obama-Putin meeting. This was this breakfast meeting yesterday. And you could see that this was a tense meeting. This was no love fest. And at the end, according to the RT correspondent, Russia Today, cable television, if you can get it, or the Internet, there was an argument. There was an altercation between Putin and Obama. Now, the, the results of this are what? The U.S. now has the right to fly over Russia to deliver military equipment to Afghanistan. And this is like saying... If you insist on going into the inferno, go ahead. Well, you know, be our guest. We know what you will find in Afghanistan. You will find defeat and death and destruction and the, the possible collapse of your own state. So they say, if you really want this, you know, go ahead and do it. So that's, that's the big result. The other one is Medvedev wanted a nuclear states conference, kind of you know, nuclear issues. Uh, the, the U.S. Will, will accept that, too. Funny, w will the Israelis be invited? Are they a nuclear state? They sure are, but they never say they are. And then the third one is that if, if the uh, Iranians give up a nuclear program, which they always say they don't have, if they give it up, then the, uh, the U.S. will not build the missiles in Poland, right? Now, today, Medvedev even says... If they insist on building the, the missiles, we're going to put these short-range nukes into, uh, into Kaliningrad, into this exclave of Russia, this uh, East Prussia, pretty much, so we can blow them up within a few minutes. So I don't think, I, I think nobody was duped. Not even Medvedev, Medvedev was duped, and for sure. Not I want to briefly talk to you in the final segment, Webster, about Iran. How's that going?